Hi, I'm Paul Kyogen from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about area volume and measurement. Now the question that I've chosen to go through here is 2019 Paper 2, Question 8, Part A. In the first part of this question, the only thing that's relevant is that they've told me I have a sphere of radius 3 centimeters, and they've asked me to find the volume of the sphere. Now if you go to your maths tables, to your area and volume page, there's a formula for the volume of a sphere and it's given as 4 over 3 pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere. So all I have to do, instead of an r, I put in a 3. And if you just plug all that into your calculator, you get 36 pi. It would ask me to leave my answer in terms of pi, so I just leave it like that. And remember that volume is always cubed. So if you have centimeters, it's centimeters cubed. For anything, if you're dealing with volume, it's 3D, so it has to be cubed. So your final answer is 36 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's look at a part two now. In the first part of the question, we were told that the sphere was in a cylinder. So this is a diagram from a part one. The sphere is in the cylinder and the cylinder is filled with water. So right to the very brim, it's full of water. In a part two now, what's happening is we're removing the sphere. So the sphere is taken out of the cylinder. So obviously what the cylinder loses, the volume that, of loss in the cylinder is 36 pi. I know the volume of the sphere is 36 pi. So if I take it out, then the cylinder loses 36 pi. That's the volume that it's lost. Now I want you to realize that obviously if the water was to the very top in the first part, if I remove the sphere, then the water is going to drop. And our question is, we have to work out what is that? What is the, the the height of drop? How much does it drop by? You need to realize that the water is obviously going to drop down to this level. Okay, so roughly down to this level, and it's going to the, the drop in water. The drop in the level will be equivalent to the volume of the sphere. If the sphere was thirty six pi, and I remove it, then that means that this here it's the drop is 36 pi. There's 36 pi centimeters cubed of empty space at the top of the cylinder. And you need to realize that the empty space at the top of the cylinder is in the shape of a cylinder. It is, it's in the shape of a cylinder. Just this little bit here is in the shape of a cylinder. And I know that the volume of it is 36 pi. So in other words, I know that this shape, the, the empty space is a cylinder. So I know, in order, according to the maths tables, to get the volume of a cylinder is just pi or squared h. And I know that the volume of the empty space is 36 pi. So this equation is going to allow me to work out the height. So I want you to just be really clear on where I came up with this. The sphere was removed from, this, from the cylinder. And the sphere had a volume of 36 pi. So obviously that means the water level drops. And the amount of empty spa space at the top of, this, of the cylinder is going to be equivalent to the amount of this sphere. So in other words, the empty space at the top is going to be 36 pi centimeters cubed. I've been, to, and I know to get the volume of this, if I was trying to calculate volume, I'd use the formula pi or squared h. And I know that that's equivalent to 36 pi in this scenario. Now that's really useful to me, because ultimately I'm trying to find the height of this cylinder. And in the question, I was told the radius of the cylinder is 5. So I know the radius, which means according to this equation, the only thing I don't know is h. I know the radius of the cylinder is 5 centimeters. So I can call this pi times 5 squared times h is equal to 36 pi. And now I've got one equation, I've got one unknown. I'm going to be able to find the height of this cylinder, or in other words, the drop in the level of water. What you could do next is you could divide both sides by pi. If you divide both sides by pi, essentially the pi's just cancel each other out, or the pi's are gone. Pi into pi goes once, pi into pi goes once, so they're gone. Five squared is 25, so the left-hand side is just 25 h, and the right-hand side just remains as 36. Now to get h on its own, I just want to divide both sides by 25. If I divided both sides by 25, the left-hand side becomes h, the right hand side becomes 36 divided by 25. If you plug that into your calculator, this works out as 1.44 centimeters. So your final answer there, the height, the drop in the level of water, the, the drop is just 1.44 centimeters. 
In A part 3, we're told that the curved surface area of the cylinder is removed from a, from a rectangular piece of metal that's 20 centimeters by 35 centimeters. And we're asked to figure out once this once the curved surface area is removed, how much is how much of the metal is remaining? Now the remaining metal is the bit that I've shaded in here. That's the bit that's going to remain. This rectangle is the bit that we're going to cut out. So I want you to, th it's important you understand this in terms of the curved surface area. Just think of a toilet roll. A toilet roll is in the shape of a cylinder. And the curved surface area of a toilet roll is the part of the toilet roll that has the tissue on it. And obviously every time that you peel off a piece of toilet paper, it's in the shape of a rectangle. But because once you wrap it around a cylinder, it's a rectangle. So what we have in this case is we have a cylinder and we're unwrapping a rectangle from it. Or in other words, we're going to cut out this rectangle and we're going to wrap it around so that it forms a cylinder. So that's the curved surface area of a cylinder. Before you wrap it around, it's in the shape of a rectangle. So in order to find the shaded region here, I need to get the area of the entire metal and then subtract the area of the rectangle that was removed. So it's the area of the original rectangle minus the area of the rectangle removed. It's very straightforward to get the area of the original rectangle. Remember, the area of a rectangle is length by width. I know the length is 20, the width is 35. So the area of the original will just be 20 multiplied by 35. There's not much issues there. But it is going to be slightly harder for us to get the area of this curved of the rectangle that's going to form uh, that's going to form a cylinder. We were told in this part of the question that the height of the cylinder is 18 centimeters. Just think of that as the height of toilet roll. Obviously, the, uh, when you take off uh, when you take out a piece of toilet roll, uh, uh, sorry, a piece of tissue. If you take out a piece of tissue, the height of the tissue is the same as the height of the cylinder. So I know that this dimension is 18. The only dimension that I don't know is what is the distance from here to here? What is the width of the rectangular piece that's taken out? So it's really important you realize this is a rectangle and I'm going to wrap it around so that basically this end is going to end up touching this end. I'm going to wrap it around so that it forms a cylinder. I need to figure out what is this length? Well, obviously, I think again, I'm going to go back to the toilet roll. Think of if you had one piece of toilet tissue and if you wanted to wrap it the whole way around a, a toilet roll. If you wanted to wrap it the whole way around the toilet roll, it would have to, how wide would it have to be? It would have to be as wide as the actual cylinder. It would have to be wide enough to just wrap once around the, the cylinder. If you had a piece of tissue that wraps once around the cylinder, then happy days would cover the whole thing. The distance from here to here needs to be the circumference of the cylinder. Let's picture this, okay? So this is my cylinder. I need to wrap a piece of tissue around it so that it fills the whole thing. So obviously I need to start here and it needs to wrap the whole way around the entire cylinder. So this length needs to be the circumference of a cylinder. So if the circumference of the circle. So if you go to your log tables, your maths tables, there's a formula for the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So I know the distance from there to there needs to be the circumference of the cylinder. And that makes life relatively straightforward because remember we know the radius of the cylinder in question is 5. So I can actually say that this dimension is 2 by pi by 5. Or in other words 2 by 5 that's just 10 pi. So the rectangle, the area of this rectangle is the length multiplied by the width. Where the length is 18 and the width is just 10 pi. The distance from there to there is just 10 pi. So remember the original question, I'm trying to get the area of this shaded region, which will be the area of the original rectangle minus the area of the rectangle that we remove. The area of the original rectangle is just 20 multiplied by 35. The area of the rectangle we're going to remove will be length multiplied by width, which in this case the length is 18 multiplied by the width, which is 10 pi. So we just need to subtract the area of this from the area of that and we plug it into our calculator, we'll get our final answer. So to finish this one off and work out the amount of metal remaining, 
it basically just boils down to the area of the large rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle. To get the area of the large rectangle, it's just 20 multiplied by 35. To get the area of the smaller rectangle, it's 10 pi multiplied by 18. 20 by 35 works out as 700. 18 by 10 pi works out as 180 pi. If you then plug that into your calculator, 700 minus 180 pi, the area of metal remaining works out as 134.5 centimeters squared. And that's your final answer for this part of the question. Now I hope all of that video makes sense. If there's anything you're struggling with there or you'd like me to explain differently, just send me an email or let me know in class and I'll go through it with you.